When I first started out in business, I felt like freelancing was the only option because I didn't feel authoritative enough to start a personal brand and I didn't have enough money to buy product for an e-commerce store. I didn't even know what consulting was, like I didn't understand the term. And so agency and freelance work are marketed towards beginners and it's for good reason. It's because one, the education is free with the internet. You can learn pretty much any skill you want. Now learning marketing, sales, and offer creation, how to package that up is a bit of a different story, right? That's where courses and other things come into play, how to use those skills in a specific business model, a new business model that college can't teach you to run. And with an agency or freelancing, you don't need to invest time or money in building some form of traffic like SEO to your website or building an audience. Uh, like a following, of course, that helps a lot. And I highly recommend doing that from the start, but you don't need it, right? You can learn some outreach strategies and some cold email and some LinkedIn prospecting and you can get your clients that way. And lastly, you only need three to four clients a month, right? You're not selling a product, so you don't need to make like a hundred sales a month to even pull in some form of an income. All you really need is to improve your skill set over time iterate on your service, get three to four clients, increase your prices, and boom, you're making more money than 90% of the population. And so that was a no brainer for me. That's why I started off with freelancing and attempted <laughs> to do multiple different things with it, right? SEO, web design, all of the above. And I still think it is an incredible option for beginners. I talk about this all the time, but if I were to go back and do something different, I just recommend that people start posting online, providing value, attracting clients that way, showing that you are an authority, and building leverage via a personal brand and a following so you aren't left with nothing when you inevitably decide, hey, I'm done with this freelancing stuff, where do I go next? And if you've only been doing outreach to clients, you're fucked. And so 36, 36% 36 of the workforce are freelancers, right? They do freelance gigs. And with the future of work and my predictions and the way the world is moving with AI, automation, I genuinely believe that that number, 36% of the workforce of freelancers is gonna skyrocket to 90% plus. I like making delusional predictions. Everyone will be a freelancer because the state of work will demand it, right? Companies will realize, why am I paying for this in-house, paying this guy a full-time salary for the same amount of work that I could pay one freelancer 1,500 bucks to do as one client? They save so much cost and freelancers themselves can make more money by taking on more clients. It just makes sense. And so that is everyone will be a freelancer until they decide they want to evolve into a creator and they can start by doing this right now with what we're going to talk about in this video, the micro business model that we're going to talk about. And still the options are endless with freelancing or any of this, right? The niches that you can go into are endless. There's endless skills to learn and stack. There's endless outreach strategies to test and content writing tactics. And it's no wonder that the online business world is so overwhelming. Every single step you take, you think you're making progress just to be met with another roadblock that causes a bunch of overwhelm and uncertainty just right when you got out of that phase, because it's all so new. Think about it. This whole online business stuff and anything that we've been talking about here has only been actually prevalent for maybe a decade, maybe. And that's insane on the grand scale of the universe. And so this is why I talk about how college isn't going to teach you any of this, right? They can't catch up with a decade's worth of curriculum like that fast. And so for those that think freelancing is their only option or they're going to start freelancing, I want to show you a new path that you can either take instead of freelancing or you can use it to help you evolve beyond freelancing, right? But first we have to shed some limiting beliefs. Education businesses are the most meaningful business models for beginners. People love to talk bad about education businesses, right? info products, courses, YouTube, content creation, information. Because people think that it's just a bunch of dudes like off in the corner, circle jerking each other, scamming people and manipulating because information isn't tangible, right? And people that have bought courses understand how life changing they can be. And if you even, if you bought a $50 course and it wasn't that good, but it's still information, they still delivered on the promise, right? And you're gonna label it as a scam. I don't see a problem with that, right? Go ahead talk bad about the courses that are bad, but at the same time, it's like, it's 50 bucks. Most college courses are complete dog shit and nobody complains about spending $2,000 just because it's conditioned into their head that that's what they should be doing. And excuse my language because I get very passionate about this because education businesses 
have helped me so much, not only because I have one, and I recommend that everyone should have one because everyone, the information in people's heads are unique. Watch the video. You have a $100,000 product stuck in your head. But at the same time, it's changed the course of my life. I would not have my anything in my entire lifestyle if it weren't for me being able to learn online from people that I aspire to be like since I was a child. That changed the entire direction of my life. And so in reality, education businesses are the most results oriented business models out there. Because think about it, it's like people complain about paying $50 for a course, but then you're gonna go and spend 15,000 to 50,000 to 75,000 dollars on a watch and think that it's any more valuable than the information that you hold in your mind that influences every single action you take in this world and the success you have henceforth from it. And here's the thing, you will only find new specific and relevant information from courses in the creator economy. That's just how it is. And so most are just impatient, right? You buy a $50 course, you see a little promise. They're like, oh, I made six figures doing this. I made seven figures doing this. I try to preface everything with it's going to take like three to five years, right? That's even in one of my YouTube titles. But at the same time, it's like people right now would rather get a sub six figure job that isn't a promise by going to four to eight years of university to learn the same curriculum as every other person going there instead of learning from a decentralized individual teaching what they know because they've gotten results from it, right? Professors, sometimes maybe they've gotten results, but they're hired by the school system to teach the school system because they went through the school system and they were a good student. And so rather than learning from an individual for 50 bucks or maybe $5,000 for coaching for the exact information you need that align with your interests in order to make that a part of your life, it's invaluable. And so to get a bit evolutionary psychology e here, to understand the importance of information, we have to understand the importance of evolution and survival, right? So animals, they seek to replicate the information in their genes, as do we, but we've also transcended that plane of existence and we try to survive the information in our consciousness, right? So the ideas, the beliefs, uh, and everything else that we subscribe to that form our concept of self, who we are. And so we don't only try to survive our physical form, but our mental form, which is who we are. It's our self. And so we do this by projecting and communicating the ideas and beliefs that we hold in our minds at any given moment, right? When I'm communicating right now, I am replicating ideas into you that will help form your sense of self and your sense of self forms your perspective, which forms how you perceive situations, which forms how you make decisions within those situations, right? So if you're watching someone else who's just like throwing out all this garbage and putting poison into your minds and you're just going to sit there and do nothing and do nothing with your life, but you're watching this and hopefully I am <laughs> replicating myself into you. I'm spiritually impregnating you, if you will to do something better with your life, because that's exactly what parents do as well. As they are raising them, as they are teaching them and educating them, they are putting pieces of themselves, their self, their mental form into their children. And so are the teachers. And so is every single other person that comes into contact and communicates with them. And so you could argue that education is what creates better selves in this world. And it goes on to impact the collective well-being of the society and civilization. Education is the pillar of progress and evolution. Education changes human behavior. Education creates useful people that contribute to society, earn more, and create jobs. The education industry will only continue to grow, and those that don't accept it may be left behind. Start an education business. I don't care who you are. Start one with a personal brand and contribute to the future. That's where this, that's where all of this is heading. Find a problem, learn how to solve it, document how you solved it, distill into a replicable process, give it to others that want to be helped. Do it offline and it's called improvement. Do it online and it's called business. A creator banks on three pillars, inspiration, education, and entertainment. And so now there are solely entertainment creators like Mr. Beast. There are also sole uh, inspiration creators or accounts like a millionaire motivation theme page, but I like to take the holistic approach, right? You have to encompass all three in the message that you're putting out to the world 
to attract the audience that you want to attract. So Joe Rogan is an example of this. He is just, he just is himself and he educates people on what he knows. He inspires people with his story and he entertains people just with his humor. And so I also do this like unconsciously. I had to reflect and think about how I incorporate all three of these, but it's like I entertain people with my philosophical musings or my ele of evolutionary psychology takes and then I use my personal experience and my story of building businesses to inspire people and then I educate people on what I've learned along the way through the courses that I've bought the things that I've done and just what I enjoy studying and so the usage of all three of these or the blending of these is what makes you the niche you are the most profitable niche go and watch that video it's a good one the future belongs to those that hold the most mental real estate Right. In other words, it belongs to those that capture and hold the most attention. Right. So TikTok ain't going to cut it because you're holding maybe 10 seconds of someone's attention. And that's all you get to uh, communicate your message with and spread your sense of self and influence their actions with in a ethical, mutual, mutually beneficial and conducive manner to a good future. So you at you as a creator and an educator need to focus on having your ideas stick in the back of people's minds because you can hold more attention with a newsletter, a YouTube video, a Twitter thread, an Instagram carousel, which we'll talk about. But as a whole, you should be focused on how your ideas stick in people's heads, right? Because uh, when I'm in a emotional rut, then I'll think back to the power of now with Eckhart Tolle and think of one of the big ideas from his book, right? And how it helps me. And I will go on to recommend Eckhart Tolle and the power of now to other people who are experiencing the same problems, right? Because his ideas were so good and they helped me so much and they changed my behavior and he replicated a part of himself in my mind through education that I attribute my progress to him. And who knows how much money I've indirectly made him just from who I've recommended it to, who they've recommended it to, and the network layers out. There's probably thousands of thousands of people that I have told about the power of now that have went and paid him $10, 3,000 times, 10 bucks, 30,000. It's probably more than that, honestly. Stop thinking of content as a means to income. Will your ideas be mentioned in a top 10 podcast episode? Will your ideas be in the intro of a best-selling book? Will your ideas be mentioned in viral videos and tight-knit newsletters? Write for impact and the income will come. And so in order to do this, you must develop yourself. You must develop your mind, your cognitive ability. Because personal development is about solving your own problems. Business is about solving other people's problems. The internet collapses both into one and allows you to earn from solving your own problems and living with purpose. So develop yourself, document the solutions via an education business and help develop others by treating your life as your life's work you go on to change the course of humanity for the better so now i want to talk about the three point micro business model i do not want to overwhelm you i want to give you actionable steps that you can use to actually start a business today and let the momentum compound and snowball over one two three years of iteration and persistence into something absolutely incredible right a mass following that will pay for your services and pay for your expertise and you will be able to pass along and have a meaningful uh, business and just lifestyle teaching these people something that is helpful to them and so as the path of mastery goes it starts as difficult and becomes more pleasurable with time things aren't going to make sense at the start you're going to start a newsletter and be like what do i write i can't do this you're going to waste a week of just overwhelm in your mind stick it out seriously trust me stick it out People quit after two weeks because they just don't have the sticking power. And the people that have the sticking power without needing a dedicated answer or, oh, like, how do I overcome this without needing that absolute clarity? The people that do that are the ones that succeed. The people that think it's a scam because they didn't see immediate results are idiots. Kindly. I say that kindly. So the process that we're going to go over is pretty simple. It's start a newsletter, write the newsletter. Condense that into a thread, Instagram carousel, or any other repurposable thing. Turn those into tweets. Let the tweets go. And, of course, you re repurpose these to different platforms as well. You see which ones perform the best. You turn that into a newsletter, and you repeat the cycle for years and years and years until you develop a philosophy that people love to read about. Right? My philosophy is the one-person business model and a bunch of philosophical concepts to back that. And so this structure, the micro-business model of newsletter, thread, 
tweet that forms your like traffic source, your content ecosystem that generates traffic that you can send to your products or services. We're not going to talk too much about products or services. You can go watch uh, the best business model to make 1 million in three to five years or any of the videos in the one person business series playlist. And this is what most of Twitter's specifically successful people run on, right? Because they're writers. And so they start with newsletter thread tweets, and then they just keep that flywheel because then they have like long, medium and short form content holding the most attention and uh, delivering the best ideas to people's minds. So the first thing is to start a newsletter and nobody wants to start a newsletter because they don't want to write to zero subscribers. And that's exactly why you should start one. Nobody is watching. And would you rather write to nobody and get the shit out before you start writing to 5,000 people and never actually send the newsletter because you're afraid of what they're going to think of your shitty letter because you didn't do it earlier. You didn't get better. And so why should you care about writing a newsletter? First, it develops the most authority. Short form content only holds so much attention. And that means you make the most sales from long form content. You own the audience you acquire. Social media platforms can go down at any time. So your newsletter is like the hub. And this is where you sell your products or services to people that care about you rather than spamming social media and looking scammy, right? A lot of people are concerned with this where it's like, I don't want to create a product. I don't want to talk about my service online. Then create a newsletter and only pitch it to the people that care about you. And so long form content should be the pillar of your business because it forces you to, to develop depth behind your ideas. It forces you to actually educate people and not just write a, a 280 character post in the form of Instagram or TikTok or shorts or tweets or whatever it may be. You're not building much authority that way. You're building some, right? It's not black or white, but you're not building as much as you could. You're not making as much sales as you could. You're not nurturing your audience and educating them as much as you could. And so how do you start writing a newsletter, a high quality newsletter? First is you hunt for high performing ideas because Frankly, it's not the animations, even though I now have an animation agency because it really does help with top of funnel Instagram growth. That's how I got from 250,000 to 1.4 million, but the ideas matter the most. So if you're interested in that link in the description for serious creators only that want to grow fast on Instagram, but it's not the captions on the clips like Alex Hormozzi does. It's not the tweet structures. It's not the specific YouTube video structure. It's not the perfect bio. It's not the most colorful thumbnail. It's the ideas people collect from someone they like. So to find high performing ideas, filter your favorite YouTubers videos by most popular and study the titles. Sign up for medium.com, select your interests and study your homepage suggestions headlines daily. Read books until a novel idea catches your attention, write it down and use it in your writing videos or speaking. And so my absolute favorite way to do this is by studying top tweets of all things, because tweets are just ideas, right? They're digestible ideas and they're time tested. They're so good. People sleep on Twitter like crazy. If you're not on Twitter and you're a creator, you're really missing out. And so I personally use Tweet Hunter. This is how I like schedule all of my content, uh, specifically on Twitter, because Twitter is a testing ground for my ideas. I write everything on Twitter, post three times a day, and then I choose the best ones and turn that into other content that usually performs pretty well. Right. And so I use Tweet Hunter to type in the accounts that I like, look at their top tweets, right? It will show you their top tweets. And then you can use that for idea generation to make sure that your ideas are validated before you go and write them in your own words. So the next thing you can do after hunting for high performing ideas is to study frameworks and use them as training wheels. So now that you have an idea, you need to practice articulating it in a persuasive and structured manner that holds people's attention. So in other words, you need to write it in a way that illustrates or implies their pains, problems, goals and the solution between both of those. And so I wrote about that in depth in the value creation video, right? Value creation, the skill that built uh, the single skill that built the entirety of my one person business. So study top performing tweets, deconstruct what they look like and why they work and practice writing it with your unique idea. Study small copywriting frameworks like PAS and ADA to tap into human psychology. You can Google those. For long form, study Pastor or the systems I give out in my course, the two hour writer, links in the description, as with all of this. Consume social media and marketing content from the lens of a creator, not a consumer, and again, practice. Ideas are only impactful if they are consumed, right? If your ideas aren't read because you don't know how to structure an idea and actually capture and hold attention, then they're never gonna see it 
and you're not going to get following. You're not going to get paid. So the next thing you can do with a newsletter after you write it is to distribute it to all platforms. You can use it as a YouTube script. Most people wing it and the videos fall flat, right? This is I'm reading. I'm using my newsletter as a soft script here and no, nobody cares that it's just a repeat, right? They prefer that people want to be reminded more than they need something new. It just works. The people that don't care, like if you care that I <laughs> read my newsletter from my phone, unsubscribe. I don't want you here, but I do love you. Either way, if you stay or leave, that sounded mean. I'm on one. Upload it to a blog so you can repost it for life. If it has your products or services, that's how you sell them. So what I do is I upload each newsletter and embed my YouTube video in a blog post. And then anytime on social media, I can plug it under a tweet or in my Instagram story, any of the posts. And then if my products or services are linked in there, not only is my YouTube growing, but my email list is growing and people are visiting my products or services. And if I do that on a daily basis, that's how I make an income. All right. So after you write a newsletter, I would start by making it like, make it like a thousand words, right? Don't make it too long, maybe 1500. I go pretty long, but just make it a thousand, 1500 words. And then the second thing you're going to do is you're going to condense the main points into a Twitter thread. So why a Twitter thread? Well, first you have to understand medium form content. If you want to stand out on short form top of funnel platforms like Twitter, Instagram, um, LinkedIn, then you have to understand that longer form content builds more authority and leads to more growth and more sales. So you are missing out if you are not writing Twitter threads that you can then repurpose into an Instagram carousel that you can go and repurpose into a LinkedIn post. And then you can fuel your YouTube or your newsletter or your blog from those things because they're generating so much traffic if you understand social media growth. And so I write a Twitter thread by taking the main ideas from my newsletter, outlining a shorter and more concise post, writing it as a Twitter thread because you are forced to condense your ideas to be the most valuable and keeping the thread to 10 to 15 tweets in length maximum. That way they can be turned into an Instagram or LinkedIn carousel with a few minutes of effort easy. And so the longer you hold attention with newsletters and threads, the more perceived value your brand has to any given individual. And so the third thing is to break it off into short form. So we talked about this earlier, but short form is your mechanism for growth and testing ideas. And by short form, I mean like tweets, Instagram posts, TikToks, reels, shorts, LinkedIn posts, but shorter, that kind of stuff, regular posts, because every single part of your thread and many parts in your newsletter can be turned into standalone posts. And then you can plug the newsletter or the YouTube video under that, that is related to that topic. And then you have your products or services in there and that's how you make sales, right? It's just an endless content flywheel of traffic circulation and nurturing your audience. So almost all of my newsletter ideas, which are then turned into YouTube and blog were taken from my top performing tweets right? Many of you have seen this and most of my video, well, all of my videos are newsletters, but the shorter ones are from my threads that I write from high performing tweets, right? So if you aren't writing short form content, if you don't have this entire three point business model in check, then you are missing out on a lot of potential growth and just ease of uh, transferring content to all platforms. And so since that that's the thing here, right, is because I tested the ideas on Twitter, I knew they did well. And Twitter's the easiest platform to grow on. If you understand what you're doing, or you go through my links in the description for help, because this is just one video, there's only so much I can go over, like it's not a course where I have a billion different pages and strategies and stuff like that, right. But since my tweets performed well, better than others. That means I know that my YouTube videos and newsletters and threads and everything else that stems from them and leading back into them are going to perform better and then increase and compound and go exponential with time. So that's the first thing that three point business model is for building distribution or traffic to send to a product or service. That's how you monetize. And so everything above will form the levers for what you do on a weekly and daily basis, right? Writing newsletters, writing threads, writing tweets, and then repurposing if you want to. So as you're building that distribution or that traffic, then you need to start to think of, okay, how am I going to monetize once you actually have it growing? So I've spoken about monetization methods a billion times before, but you study your interests, you start a service business, you grow an audience, you work for free, you develop your process, you increase prices, you repeat five through six, you productize your process and you scale your audience and your income scales with it as you evolve. But with this three part micro business approach, there are a few different ways to go about this, right? So Sean Puri, for example, I believe that's how you say his name. He started a newsletter business where he had about 100K subscribers and he was making $50,000 a month from sponsorships 
from that. So if you build a newsletter, you reach out for sponsorships and they pay a lot of money. I promise, especially if you're in a like a decent niche where the sponsorships are. And then if you film your newsletter as a YouTube video and you grow on YouTube, then you expect you can accept sponsorships there as well. Because when I think about this, I heard this the other day, Max Tuning, a fitness guy, he does, he gets a good amount of views per video, but he said that he only makes $100,000 per year from like AdSense and monetization, but with sponsorships, he makes a million dollars a year, right? So sponsorships can make you a lot of money, but creating your own products or service will always make you the most money. And so if you have the sponsorships and you have the AdSense and whatever it is, you just create a digital product like Justin Welsh, who he has two $150 products based on the things that he's done. He literally just created a product because he knew how to grow an audience. And that adds another million dollar a year revenue stream. Of course, when you're on Justin Welsh's level, but still, even people that get like a 10K a month revenue stream, that's life changing. And so literally the only thing you have to do is just build an audience and then focus and learn about monetization along the way. Teach what you learn, create a product or service, promote, and then you're good to go. Build distribution, then build whatever you want. Shout out Jack Butcher. Because you have infinite monetization options in this day and age. Like once you just build an audience, like opportunities are thrown at you. People are like, hire me. I like your content. I'll, I'll pay you $3,000 for coaching. Do you have a product where I can learn more about this? Hey, we want to sponsor your newsletter. Like you literally just have to put yourself on the market by doing the things that I've been telling you to do. Give value, build distribution, ask to get paid. That is it. Before you leave, I have an actual important message. So I've been told many times digital economics, it is underpriced. It's kind of expensive already, but I am doubling the price. Okay. So Solopreneur Sprints, the cohort starts on May 15th, around that date. At that time, digital economics is going to be doubling in price, right? Digital economics houses Solopreneur Sprints. So if you want to get in on this month's cohort or May's cohort, then purchase digital economics while the price is still technically cut in half. Uh, that's all I have to say for now. I'll talk about it more in future videos. Join the newsletter if you actually want updates. But aside from that, like, subscribe. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you.